This is the Evil Never Dies podcast with Brett and Carl. This podcast may contain adult themes, violence and strong language. Listener discretion is advised. The Evil Never Dies podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Evil Never Dies podcast. I'm Brett here with Carl. Yeah, and I have a cat named Dracula who keeps wanting to bring me a toy mouse and she's screaming at the top of her lungs for me to come get it. And evidently I bought a fucked up camera. <laughs> evidently. <laughs> Dracula, shush. I've been f- messing with this thing for two weeks now and can't get it right. So I think well, I'm going to go back to my other one. But we didn't have time to do that tonight, so. No, it's getting late on a Friday night, and we're behind because I had to work late. So now we're running late on this show. Yeah, we are. We're, we're recording. Tomorrow it. night, we'll be doing uh, Real Talks, and you'll be doing Ape. So no time for the show tomorrow night. So here we are at almost 10 o'clock. Is it almost 10 now? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get there. We'll so tonight we're going to we've uh I think we've teased this for a few episodes. We're going to talk about the movie Ed Wood and a little bit about the life of the uh movie producer director Ed Wood. If you don't know who Ed Wood was, he was sort of kind of a cult filmmaker who was known for the D C Z rated movies. I don't <laughs> know what you would call them. Yeah. Um, he they always a, called B films. Got, I think this is below a B film uh, yeah, he, is the, the movies he made. He was actually, after he died, he was actually awarded the worst director in history. Well, I think that's bullshit, but I've, I have seen worse movies. Now, I'm talking about Ed Wood and his prime, which is sort yeah. of what the movie Ed Wood covers. I've seen way worse movies than the movies he made. I really have. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know the movies are sort of cheesy and they were done low budgeted, but I've seen worse. I've seen a lot worse. So I don't think he's the worst director ever. Now, I don't know. You you were telling me before we went on the air about some of the stuff he did in his later days, and I wasn't aware of that. So you'll school me on that here in a bit. Well, let, well let's so go. Let's maybe that out. actually makes him the worst director of all time. I didn't see any of those movies. So, well, yeah. Uh, well, let's start out really about his beginnings and yeah. Stuff let's like just that. yeah go over Ed Wood the man. He was actually sort of like a war hero. Yes, he was in World, World, World War II. II. He was a paratrooper. I think he was with the hundred uh, first Airborne, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't don't quote me on that, but he was a paratrooper. And uh, but I, I guess when he was growing up, his mom wanted a girl and got oh, a really son. yeah so she used to dress him up in girls clothes and parade him around as a girl i i sort of knew that just so, from, yeah well it ended up he got used to doing that so he would wear girls clothes all the time and he actually wore girls' clothes while he was in the army fighting World War II. Yeah, I think he said he wore a bra and panties under his uh, military uniform. Is that yep. true? Yep, that's what that's what I heard too. Yeah. So yeah, so he was basically a cross dresser, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what they did. Did they call them transvestites back then, or because this was the late forties, early fifties, and uh but yeah he wore girls clothes yeah. totally straight loved women dated some pretty beautiful women he did yes his wife was very beautiful that he was married to for 40 years almost yeah he just um i don't know i guess like d snyder 
<laughs> I guess. But his first wife, actually, on their honeymoon when they got married, when they went to consummate the marriage, he had a pair of women's panties on. <laughs> That's funny. So she said, screw that, and got the marriage annulled. Well, what an asshole. Yeah, no shit. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, she's a bitch. Fuck her. So anyway, then he started uh like doing some small productions of like plays and stuff. This was after he got out of the out of the military. And uh some plays that really didn't go anywhere. And uh he yeah, always felt bad for Ed Wood. It's like he just never caught the right break. Exactly. And I guess he never did catch the right break at any point. No, especially with some of the later stuff he did. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with that stuff. So he basically, I think, was one of the started the in the beginning of like the early seventies to mid seventies, like sexploitation films and that took over the entire horror genre at one point even hammer was doing that yeah and uh some of the movies he and he did like 50 short films too of of that type of material uh just sort of like stupid stuff i guess sexual stupid stuff you know like <laughs> uh one of them is called girl on a bike <laughs> girl on a bike yeah lusty neighbor <laughs> and these are like 15 minute short films that he that he wrote and directed oh yeah i didn't know he did a lot of that stuff so i think uh, after um bride of the monster and plan nine i sort of lost track of ed wood yeah well that's when he started in on the sexploitation stuff uh let me see here some of me mixed with horror too well i know he had a movie called jailbait but that wasn't the name he actually called it i guess the producer or the distributor renamed it that like behind his back so when it came to the theaters it was called jailbait so there you go. Let me see when that came. I would up. imagine in that day and age that would have been considered pretty taboo. I don't know. Yeah, that was one of his first uh first films. It was like the fifth or sixth movie he did. But basically his first movie that, that he did was a movie about a transsexual called Glenn or Glenda. Yeah, that movie's covered in the the, in the 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 Tim Burton film that we'll cover at the end of the show. Yep. And uh and I've actually seen Glenn or Glenda. I used to have it on VHS. I think I bought a box with all the more known Ed Wood movies on it in the VHS era, I guess we could call it. Yeah, hey, look, there's and, something. And then there. probably his most famous movie is Plan Nine from Outer Space. Dad or Bride of the Monster. I guess Plan 9 is more known. It was yeah. his biggest budgeted movie. I know that much. And it was the last movie of... Uh, Lugosi? Bella Lugosi. Well, it was stock footage of Bella Lugosi, so I don't know if that really counts or not, but <laughs> it was considered his last film. They used a double... Yeah, we we'll replace Bella. We'll get into that too when we cover the show. Yeah, the the movie. So, but uh, yeah, that's really all I got about Ed Wood. I had a lot of interesting uh, tidbits. Yeah, um, sounds like he sort of went downhill, but he never gave up his dream. I mean, hell, he was doing what he loved. And also a bunch of stuff that he would writ that he had, had written was released as late as 2017. He I he like knew he, that. He like did some like wrote some like westerns and stuff. I don't know if they were if they were actually released 
before or and then re-released or what but uh the vampire's tomb from uh 2014 have you seen that no i have not it looks like it was made back in the the 50s 50s 60s what it looks like well, maybe we need to see if we can find that check into that yeah and what else yeah that he 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 wrote wrote and created a bunch of stuff back in the day and it looks like they redid glenn and glenda in 1994 too i'll say this ed wood was ahead of his time you know i i think um a lot of people ought to give the guy credit for some of the risque moves he made and was not scared to make exactly, exactly. so looking back on ed wood now and under 2023 eyes, he might receive a lot more respect than he ever got in the 70s and 80s, where he became a joke. You know, he was, you know, playing none from outer space is the dumbest movie ever. Well, it might not have been a good movie, but the dude's doing what he loved and what he enjoyed. And I give a lot of credit to Ed Wood for that. And he didn't uh, let people dictate what he can or could not do. So I'm giving Ed Wood a lot of credit for being a pioneer and a rebel. Exactly. So, I mean, it's just like with bands, just because a band doesn't become, you know, sell 12 million records doesn't mean that they're necessarily the worst band ever. Exactly. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to throw John Bon Jovi under the bus, but. I mean, John Bon Jovi sold a lot of records, but is he the greatest artist ever? No, not really. Far from, far from it. Hey, the Young Guns two album is good. That that's his best work. <laughs> All right. Anything else on Ed Wood, the the not, uh, director producer? Not really. He, he was just you know he wasn't afraid to push that button. You know. No, he wasn't. Uh very creative guy for sure yeah and he gave um lagosi a shot whenever nobody else would exactly yeah he hadn't made a movie in years before he met up with ed wood well there's a lot of controversy about did ed wood take advantage of Lugosi or not so we'll talk about that when we talk about the movie a little bit more well I guess we'll get into the movie yeah and um I want to do an episode like this on William Castle we've talked about that before I kind of like this format talk about a director and then get into one of the movies or something because William Castle was a bit like Ed Wood via a lot more successful but his movies were sort of gimmicky and low budgety as well well, let's get into the 1994 film, Ed Wood, which was directed and produced by Tim Burton. And it starred Johnny Depp as Ed Wood, which shouldn't be a shock since Tim Burton and Johnny Depp have teamed up many, many times. The many. films, huh? Many, many. The film sort of is during the period of, of Ed Wood's life when his best known films were made. Not what you're talking about in the later days and his relationship with um, actor Bela Lugosi, who was played by Martin Landau in this movie. And boy, oh boy, it don't look like Martin Landau. They did a good job on that one. Well, Rick Baker actually did the makeup, and he did a really good job. I think this thing won some awards. We'll get to that when you get to your awards section. Well, there's a, there's, always got an award section here. It was so. nominated uh, for a lot of awards. Okay, well, save that for your award section. I actually want to hear this one. Okay, all Not right. Not when you give out awards from 2024 <laughs> for a best DVD or whatever. These are going to be some good awards. <laughs> <laughs> all right, like you said, it was directed by Tim Burton. Screenplay by Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski. Based on the biography, Nightmare of Ecstasy, 
The Life and Art of Edward D. Wood Jr. by Rudolph Gray. I should have read that book at one point, but I never did. I kind of might have to go back and find that eventually. I think it's on audiobook, actually. I'm well, gonna... I'll get my, I get my read everything on the Kindle reader, so I would need to get find a Kindle copy on Amazon. I'm too blind to read it, so I'm gonna have to listen to it. <laughs> All right, produced by Tim Burton and Denise Denovi. Cinematography by Stefan Zaskby. Edited by Chris Lebenson. Music by Howard Shore. I was going to say Howard Stern. The score was pretty cool. Oh, I love the score. Uh, me yeah. and Video Bob used to use the, the, some of the Ed Wood music for Underground Connection as background music because uh, we were on cable access and nobody could fucking sue us back then, you know? Copyright bullshit. Yeah, there was no copyrights. All right. Now, you do know who distributed this movie, right? Yeah, Buena Vista Pictures. That's Disney. That's Disney. This is a Disney film. Uh, yes. So could this make Ed Wood a Disney princess? <laughs> Maybe. He could. He probably would have dressed up like one. Yeah, sure. he would have. And it would have been cool as shit. Yeah, weren't, weren't they, didn't they try to go with Columbia first and then uh, Columbia didn't want it to be in black and white? Yeah, but... I know they had some issues with it being a black and white film. And... Which sort of turned me off when I first like, why in the hell am I gonna watch this black and white? But it worked. It worked really well. Yes, it did. It's one of the best black and white films ever, I believe. Well, movies that were made in the modern day in black and white. Yep, exactly. Like um, Raging Bulls, an example I would use. Yep. Uh, production company was Touchstone Pictures. The former Disney movies that weren't for children company that went out of business. Yeah. Now they own 20th Century for that role. All right. It was released on September 23rd, 1994 in, at the New York Film Festival. And September 30th, 1994, everywhere else. As a running time of 127 minutes. Country of origin is the United States. English language. Budget was $18 million. Yeah, and it didn't do well at the box office. Oh, they lost about $6 million. <laughs> Which is surprising to me. I, thought... but I, I think they've made their money back and, you know, other media sales by now, so... I'm sure they have. But it, yeah, it only made $13.8 million at the box office. Now, when this first came out, I was like confused, you know? <laughs> you I, were I, confused? I, I really didn't know who Ed Wood was at the time, you know, back then until I. Well, I did because I actually knew about Plan 9 from Outer Space. Because I think it was at the video store and I like rented it and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. So there might have been like a documentary or something about Ed Wood. I don't know. I remember I knew who Ed Wood was when this came out for some reason. And it had to have been Plan 9 from Outer Space because I don't remember Bride of the Monster until after the movie. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't remember him either for sure when this came out. So. It was new to a me. lot of people didn't. It only made thirteen million. Yeah, I don't even. I think I. I think I didn't see it till actually when it came out on video. So I didn't go see it at the theater. I know that. I probably would have wanted my money back at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to go over the plot a little bit? Carl? Yeah, we'll we'll go over the plot. So it's the 1950s and Ed Wood is trying to enter the film business or the film industry. And he heard an announcement that a, a producer, I don't know who it was offhand, 
was trying to purchase um, somebody named Christine Jorgensen's life story. Well, Christine Jorgensen was actually a transgender person in the 1950s. So guess what, folks? This isn't something that just happened overnight. This has been going on forever. And um, Ed uh, met with the, was it, what was the name of the producer that was trying to do this? You know it? Oh, let me see here. We'll keep going. I'll, I'll get okay. to it. Okay. So anyway, they met with the, um, uh, Ed Wood met with him and they, they changed the, or the film was called I Changed My Sex, but Ed is not hired. So along the line, um, he meets Bella Lugosi. <laughs> According to the movie, Lugosi is trying out coffins, and Ed Wood just walks up to him and says, hey, it's Bell Lugosi. And he's like, why are you looking at coffins? He's like, because I'm going to die. I'm dying. I will die very soon. I get my <laughs> Lugosi going tonight. <laughs> so anyway, Ed finally just, uh, uh, talks to, talk him into directing the movie, but uh, having Bella Lugosi in it would help sell tickets. So they signed Bella for a low price and the movie is filmed in its name, Glenn or Glenda. Yeah. They argue over the title because I think the director had it already had a poster called I Changed My Sex, but it is called Glenn or Glenda. And uh, Ed Wood actually stars in the movie. So, yeah. And Bella Lugosi does like the narration yep and they basically do a, a one take shot of uh for the movie and they get it made yeah in like eight days or something wasn't it like seven or eight days it was a short yeah it didn't take long at all well the movie's released and it's a critical failure <laughs> so he didn't get work with the guy again so his girlfriend uh, Dolores Fuller, who um, actually she has a story of her own, but we'll get into later, maybe, uh, tries to talk him into financing his next film independently. So Ed starts um, trying to raise money and meets this psychic named the Amazing Chriswell. And basically they go on these big, huge runs trying to make money to make Ed Wood's movies. So... That's sort of the premise of the film. And every movie he makes, he's going to have Lugosi as a star in it. And that's his big selling point. I got Bella Lugosi. Well, most people are like, we thought Bella Lugosi was dead. Well, yep. unfortunately, Bella's career was pretty dead by this point. But Ed Wood gives him a little bit of glory there, so. That's the premise of the movie. I don't know if you want to spoil anything else or not. I don't really not know that you really. can spoil this movie. It's basically about that time in his life when he was making all these F-grade movies, I guess. You independent films. Yeah, yeah. I'll be nice and call them independent films. Yeah, they were all made in like a week. And uh, Well, I know he met some girl who he thought was a wealthy heiress who said she would pay for his film, but unfortunately she only had like $20. So they get kicked out of the, uh, the movie studio. Yeah. So filming is halted yeah. and they get like a uh, meat packing tycoon to fund the movie, but he wanted his son cast in it. So that movie becomes the ride of the monster. I thought he, I thought he was a preacher. No, that comes later. Oh, okay. That comes later. Okay, yeah, that's for the plant plan nine from outer space. That's right. But this Dolores King, who um Edward thinks is a uh, wealthy lady, actually says she wants to play wants to star in Bride of the Monster. So Edward's girlfriend uh gets knocked out of the starring role and that sort of pissed her off. She yes, became the did. file clerk. Yes, it did. Well, All right. she eventually will break up with him because she finds out he is a cross-dresser and the chick don't like it, so off she went. So he starts... Actually, I think he tries to date uh, Vampira, who like was the Elvira of the 50s, actually the originator of that. Yep. And she thought he was gay, and he's like, I'm not gay. Why would you think that? And she's like, well, you, know, you wear women's clothes. He's like, no, 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 I love women. Yep. And I don't guess he gets to date Vampira, but he will eventually date 
this Loretta King and marry her. So, um, nope. Is it her or is it another chick? I forget. I don't remember. He marries some girl well, well, that actually embraces over. his um, cross dressing and and thinks it's cool. Well, I'm going to go over the cast, and we'll, we'll 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 you'll you'll know who it is then. <laughs> oh, and one last thing: Lagosi goes to rehab, and that was really a true story. And the pictures were awful. I saw him the other day. The real Lugosi. Oh, really? It was bad. It was way worse than the movie portrays. I'm sorry, I've got an ice in my mouth here that was a little big. I didn't want to choke on it. Yeah, it, it the pictures were bad. Lugosi was in a really, really worse shape than Ed Wood, the movie portrays even. Yeah. So let's go over the cast and I'll find out who Ed Wood marries. All right. We got Johnny Depp playing Edward D. Wood Jr. And uh, he was cast within 10 minutes of uh, Tim Burton hearing that he got to direct this film. So he wanted Johnny Depp bad to do it. Well, he was good in it. Yeah, he was. He played a really good job. Next, we got Martin Landau as Bela Lugosi. And he did such a good job at this movie. Yes, he did. And a little bit of trivia. Martin Landau was in a a uh, space show in the 19, like 75 to 77. Uh, what the heck was it called? Did you watch that show? Uh, no. Oh, what was it called? Space 1999. Yeah, that came like after Star Trek. I I, yeah. I thought it was cheesy looking, so I never watched it. Well, the director that directed that show was Hungarian. And when he saw Mar Martin Lando portraying Bela Lugosi, he called him after not talking to him for 10 years and told him how good of a job he did with the dialect from Hungary. Yeah, that Hungarian dialect is is sort of Hungary. hard to pull off versus uh, Romanian. The Romanians and the Hungarians are not very friendly with each other anyway. So, but and Martin Landau said that he watched every film that Bela Lugosi ever did. God damn, every film, every film, to learn how to talk like him. So, well, everybody thinks when i do my karabi voice i'm ripping off bella but actually i'm ripping off um i don't think one of my wrestling nothing, characters i don't think you sound nothing like bella lugosi people so. think that they're oh you're dracula well no i'm actually doing more of a um romanian type of sort of northern uh italy up in that area thing so yeah but i can do a bella lugosi when i need to <laughs> what was that your voice is too high. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I have to deepen it up and do a little bit. I can't do Lugosi right now. I'm too sleepy. Anyway. All right. Next, we got Sarah Jessica Parker as Dolores Fuller. Which is well, I'm going to tell you a story about her. She becomes a songwriter for Elvis Presley after she gets away from Ed Wood. Exactly. Did a bunch of stuff on the Blue Hawaii movie i think sure did. stuff on there and she was embarrassed by ed wood for his cross-dressing so yep she left him she left him for that and losing the lead in that movie that so. didn't help yeah I don't, I don't know i mean whatever on that one <laughs> next we got patricia arquette as kathy o'hara that's the one he that, married that's his woman how could i forget patricia arquette <laughs> she did she did a good job in this movie she she was really laid back like she just didn't give a shit you know yeah she did, did. All right. next we got jeffrey jones as the amazing criswell that's the psychic yep that's the psychic tv psychic guy <laughs> that guy looked just like the real criswell too sort of right? yeah yeah, yeah. I was looking at pictures of that. 
Next, we got G.D. Spradlin as the Reverend Lemon. He was the Baptist minister who funded Planet Nine from outer space. Now, there you go with your yeah. That was it was it was the Baptist who funded Plan Nine. It was the meat packer who did Bride of the Monster. <laughs> That's funny. Next, we got Vincent D'Onofrio. He plays Orson Welles, who is Ed Wood's, like... Idol? Idol, yeah. Now, did that really happen? Did he really meet Orson Welles, or was I that just... I don't know. I couldn't find I, nothing I about that. I couldn't find that. nothing about it either. I would have to actually read the damn book, and I don't have time right now, so... But Tim Burton didn't like the way Vincent D'Onofrio sounded his voice so he had a yeah. guy named maurice lamarche uh do the voice for it yeah you got to get uh, orson welles voice it. right you can't yeah. fuck up orson welles voice exactly orson welles was a genius i don't care what anybody says next we got lisa marie as myla numi or better known as vampira the oh, real Elvira. The real Elvira. There's a really cool documentary on her on Tubi. I'm going to watch it. It is very good. If I can stay and, awake tonight, I may watch it tonight. Oh, it's too good. You got you to gotta watch it. You got you to gotta watch it another time. You can't be sleepy and watch it. <laughs> okay, I'll wait <laughs> for it. Yeah, you'd be better off waiting. You'll enjoy it very much more. So Okay. It's a very good documentary. I highly recommend. So Okay, cool. Next, we got Bill Murray as John Bunny Breckenridge. You damn well bet we got Bill Murray in one of his best roles, I think. I think, too. And he played Ed's drag queen friend who helps him with, uh, he gets him all of his transvestite buddies and all that. Yeah. Yeah, they were trying to Over get him off Los for Angeles um, and Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to get him off for uh, Glenn or Glenda, and he had like a whole room full of uh, of transvestites. And yeah, Bill Murray did a great job in that role because yes, it was definitely not Bill Murray. He, he that's that shows his ability as an actor because exactly I loved it. Exactly. Yeah, he did a, just just his mannerisms and stuff. It was like. When I first seen him, he's because he's like in the opening shot of the movie, you know. Yes, he is. So next we got Max Casella as Brent and Brent Hinckley as Paul Marco and Conrad Brooks. They were like Ed's production assistants, actors. They did everything. They're like his gopher guys, you know. But they were in all of his movies. And uh, they're like some misfit guys, but they ended up making it pretty big. Uh, one guy, the the in real life had his own, ended up having his own TV show for a while, like variety show. I never knew that. No. Yeah, I think it only aired a one season, maybe. Well, the one character is the one who gets into a Bell Lagosi. Because he he calls Lugosi Karloff's sidekick. Yeah. And that's where Lugosi, the, my favorite line of, of almost any movie, Karloff, sidekick, fuck you. Karloff does not deserve to smell my shit. That limey cocksucker can rot in hell for all of that I care. And you know, that's, that's weird because uh, Boris Karloff's son, or not Boris Karloff, uh, Lugosi's son. Lugosi's son said that he never cussed. That was I don't know thing. that I believe Lugosi's son. That well, that's what he said. Well, he, he said he was it, very much a gentleman, and he would never use that kind of language. I think he hated Karloff. I think he did too. <laughs> he didn't like Karloff because Frankenstein got became so popular, and I guess he turned down the role of Frankenstein. So, you know, Karloff always got the top billing in them Universal movies. So yeah. I think there was a little bit of um, jealousy with Lugosi. And I Karloff think. had a longer career and a more storied career. Sorry, Bella, but he did. Sad. But I don't know. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine that Lugosi did cuss because that's one of my favorite lines right there. Yeah. In video, Bob and David, my friend, we used to like spot that line out all the time. We would just stop in the middle of the store and start screaming it out. We were crazy back then. <laughs> all right, next we got George the Animal Stealer. Steel. What? George the Animal Steel. The wrestler? The wrestler. God dang, it is George Animal Steel playing Tor Johnson. And Tor Johnson was actually a professional wrestler also. Yeah, and he couldn't talk like George Animal Steel couldn't talk. They were sort of like the same gimmick almost. Well, if you look at pictures of them. They look alike. They look almost, they could be brothers for sure. Yeah, they could. You know, he, he, he played a good role in this for sure. Well, and George Animal still was known, you know, as in wrestling, he couldn't speak. And he would say, hey, hey. Well, in one part when they're filming Bride of the Monster, Bell Lugosi has like a whip and he's beating him with it. And George Animal still starts his hey, hey, he's just like in wrestling. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> I'm sure it was done intentionally because, you know. And, you know, Tor Johnson had the best-selling Halloween mask for like 10 years running sure did popular halloween mask that's a true story from from like the early 70s to the uh almost 1980 remember you could buy masks off the back of uh magazines the horror magazine i remember those and i remember the tor johnson mask yep but that's how he basically got his big name was from that mask so well with me i always know him as the wrestler so there you go next we got juliet landau as loretta king who was the thought mistaken harris yeah the mistaken <laughs> harris harris yeah i said it wrong and juliet landau was actually uh What's his name's daughter? Martin Landau. Martin Landau's daughter, yes. Yep, you're right. She was also Drusilla and Buffy. Yep. That's right. She is, isn't she? She sure the heck is or was or I don't know. I miss Buffy. They need to bring that shit back. <laughs> Next we got Ned Bellamy as Tom Mason who played Kathy's chiropractor, who was chosen to be Bella Lugosi's stand-in. But they he never sure was. face. He <laughs> sure was. They always showed him with this cloak over his, his you know, the famous Bella Lugosi. Well, Lugosi, yeah, Lugosi did that for real, so it's believable that this character could have went around with a cloak on him. So I'm yeah. just saying. Hey, look, I got my Bella Lugosi mug tonight, too. Oh, or is that Count Krabi? Who knows? Isn't that special? All right, next we got Stanley DeSantis as Mr. Feldman. He I played an he executive was. executive at Warner Brothers. Oh yeah, that guy. He he was yeah the he, he didn't like dead. Ed Wood. No. Rance Howard as Old Man McCoy. The meat that was the meat packer. Guy. Yeah. He uh, funded Bride of the Monster. And last but not least, we got Coral, Corla Pandit as the Indian musician. Yeah, that's when they were having a party. Yeah. I think it was the rap party for Bride of the Monster. Or it might have been Plan 9. I think it was uh, Bride of the Monster because they were at the bar. Yeah the brown derby or whatever it was yeah that was like a famous hollywood eatery hangout still is i think i think it's gone but i don't know is i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie but i don't, I don't know. know i haven't I been to gone. hollywood in 30 years so time to go back no <laughs> hey why not please no <laughs> all right that's all we got for the cast 
Uh, a little bit of the historical accuracy before you go any further. Okay. Now, Burton hit, did say that it's not hardcore realistic. So he admitted that a lot of it is sort of, you know, choreographed, staged. I sound like I'm talking about wrestling now. Um, now, it was Bella Lugosi Jr. or Bella G. Lugosi. Yeah, Bella G. Who is the one that said that it was inaccurate that Lugosi, like you said, never cussed. He didn't own small dogs. He didn't sleep in coffins. And um, he wasn't basically nearly as bad as Tim Burton portrayed him in the movie. Um, I don't know. That's his son. I mean, you can take it for what it's worth. I mean, we know that movies are to entertain. And this movie did entertain. So maybe Bella was not as bad as it appeared. But I don't know. I don't I, know. I, mean, I believe they portrayed his uh, drug addiction. I think that, I know that was done accurately. It was done yeah. worse in, in real life. He looked uh, he looked awful in that picture that they took when he was in the sanitarium. Yeah, that's awful, man. Um, even back also, then, even back then, getting a hurt back because that's what was his. That's what he started out with his back. Yeah, and he got he addicted to um, morphine. And, morphine, yeah, yeah, and was shooting up morphine. Well, they also criticized the depiction of Dolores Fuller as being pretty inaccurate. So, um, I don't know how accurate this movie really is in any way. Um, I didn't read the Ed Wood book. I really should have when I was younger, when I read all the time. Um, so it is what it is. I mean, you can take it for what it is. It's it's a biography that's depicted, you know, as a movie. So it's not going to be loosely based. Loosely based. Loosely based on the life of Ed Wood and Bela Lugosi. We'll we'll put it at that. Yeah. All right. You got anything else you want to add before I go into a little trivia? Um, I I'll give you a little bit about the DVD. Okay. The DVD was being released and I had the goddamn thing and it disappeared. It went off the shelves because I think David wanted to buy it. Somebody, maybe it was Bob. We, the three of us love that movie. And I had the DVD and it actually got pulled off the shelf. So um, it was postponed, but I actually, I was, I actually had the damn thing. And um, so I'm sure my copy might be worth a lot of money because I actually still own the original DVD. I never bought it on Blu-ray because I read that the Blu-ray actually didn't look any better than the DVD and it didn't have any special features. So there you go. There's some trivia in this uh, museum. We have an original DVD edition of Ed Wood that got pulled off the shelf due to legal reasons. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, even you said you you had a hard time finding it. You were looking at it, looking for it to watch it the other day, and you couldn't. Well, I have it in a special place because I do know that it's sort of a rare, one of my rare uh, movies. So yeah, I wasn't where it would normally have been with the DVDs. It was in a, it's actually on the wall with a bunch of other stuff. So there you go. Now on to awards or trivia or whatever you got. Let's go into some trivia, I guess, first. Uh, Kathy Wood, Ed Wood's wife, she actually visited the set and asked to meet Johnny Depp. Uh, the day they were filming the scene where Wood would actually look really messed up, which Burton uh, made Burton nervous about it because she was there. Maybe because he wasn't portraying everything correctly. I don't know. And he didn't he, he didn't want her to think badly of the movie. And uh she seen Johnny Depp come out of his trailer and said, That's my Eddie. <laughs> oh wow. So that was her thumbs up to the movie, I guess you would say. This film cost more to produce than all of Edward D. Woods Jr.'s movies put together. 
Now, is that from beginning to end? I think he actually directed his last movie in 1976. So, who knows if that's an accurate number or not? Of course, you got inflation to throw in there too. So, I think that's sort of a silly, silly number. Tim Burton said that he was drawn to the story because of similarities between Ed Wood's relationship with Bella Lugosi and his own friendship with Vincent Price late in the actor's life. Ah, that's true. He was in a lot of Tim Burton movies. Yep. I need to find me a Bella Lugosi. I've been looking for one for years. Some former famous somebody to hang out with. I'm still looking for my Lugosi. Uh, oh shit! Uh, there's about Bella Gosey Jr. saying that his father was didn't use foul language. I, I, you know, back to that. I think that he would use foul language, especially, especially in his late the... in his later life. You know. Do I believe Bella Lugosi called um, Boris Karloff a limey cocksucker? Yes, I believe that. I will always believe that. Because it's true. Damn it. What do you think of that? Oh. I got you on that one. Oh. I got you, Bubba. You're speechless because I called... Boris, call off a limey cocksucker. You're, you're speechless. This is Tim Burton's favorite movie that he's directed. That's cool. I would say Batman would be mine of his, but that's just me. Jeffrey Jones's monologue at the beginning of the film is a play on Chris Wells' monologue from Plan 9 from Outer Space. That's Nine, true. Seven. That was a that was a weird movie. I watched that. Plan Nine. Yeah. Like I said, I saw it as a kid, and I it's thought it very was very strange. Um, I prefer Bride of the Monster. That's my favorite Ed Wood movie. I would say. It's not as cheesy as maybe Plan Nine. This is the first film by Tim Burton not to feature the score done by Danny Elfman. Well, heck. Wasn't this Tim Burton's first movie? No? No. Oh, okay. What did he do before this? I can't think. I got a brain fart here. I don't know. This isn't about Tim Burton's. <laughs> this is about Ed Wood, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Jesus. Why don't you go into awards here? Went down the wrong pipe. Let me find the awards. Oh, Michael here. Myers. Get on to awards. Michael Myers. Oh, shit. Let me see. Where's the awards? Where's the awards? Well, it was nominated for three Golden Gloves. I know that for a fact. Golden Globes? Golden Globes, what I call it gold gloves they're not boxing <laughs> i'm thinking of boxing um i know johnny depp and martin landau both were nominated for best actor and best supporting actor and Man. landau actually won a golden globe not an, a glove for that movie so you find your award yet yes good martin lando actually won the Academy Award for Best He's, Supporting Actor. He certainly the hell did, and that was well-deserved. Yes, it was. He did an awesome job in this movie. And Rick Baker, Vay Neal, and Yolanda Tusing won Best Makeup. And they deserve that as well. Yep, they did a good job doing him up as Bella, for sure. Uh, it was nominated for all kinds of awards. And well deserved, in my opinion. Nominated for Best Picture, Comedy, or Musical for the Golden Globe. Or Glove. Uh, nominated for Best Actor, Johnny Depp for Comedy or Musical. 
And Best Supporting Actor, Martin Landau, won the Golden Globe. I said that already. Did you say that already? Yeah. Okay. I guess the most famous one is the Saturn Awards, the next one. Uh, Martin Landau won for Best Actor. Best Music for Howard Shore. Best Makeup for Rick Baker. Uh, Best Fantasy Film was nominated. And Best Writing was nominated for Scott Alexander and Leslie Larry Karaziski, however the hell you say it. So that is the awards. Yeah, it was definitely an award winning movie. So Ed Wood got so much shit in his life, I'm sure he would be smiling down or smiling up. He's probably in hell. Where am I going? And uh, laughing that I get that my movie won all the awards, so I'm sure that would make Ed Wood very happy. All right, well, you got anything else about Ed Wood mm, there, Carl? Nope, I do not. Okay, well, what do you rate this movie at, Carl? Uh, this movie is really hard for me to rate because, again, I uh, watched it with my buddies. You know, when it was first released back on videotape and we, we just had a ball watching this movie. You know, we would like I said, we would shout lines out from it for years. Um, Landau was absolutely great. One of the best roles maybe ever. I don't know. Could be Johnny Depp. Good. They all did a good job. Now, the accuracy of it. I have a look now that I'm older. I kind of question, you know, this really probably isn't how this all went. So that might take a point or two off there for me. But I watch this movie and I always love it still. So I'm going to have to give Ed Wood a four. Okay. That's fair. I Because, you know, being mostly horror genre stuff he made, especially, I just, I find it fascinating. And I sort of sometimes feel like I'm I'm the Ed Wood of whatever I'm doing. I just never get to the top, but I never quit trying. So, exactly. Yeah, I sort of feel like that too. A lot of lot of respect for Ed Wood. You know, never give up. And as the Texas Rangers have on their new Peagle jerseys, dream the big dream. All right. So a four, huh? Yeah. Why not? Well, this is, I, I think this is your typical Tim Burton movie. It was really dark in a lot yeah, of ways. It had a lot of humor to it. A lot of humor. Uh, I sort of felt bad for Bella Lugosi, though. Uh, you think they kind of made, 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 made fun of him and used him a bit? Yeah, like he was being used. And just with his drug you know, ODing in, in the movie and all that. I, I felt bad for general, genuinely felt bad for Bella Lugosi. But how much of that was reality and how much of it was done for See, the That's movie? the thing you don't know. You don't know. But we do know the Lugosi was in a rehab or the sanitarium, whatever they called him back then. And he looked terrible in the pictures, the reality pictures. So who knows if this is exactly how it went or not. So but maybe that's the way Tim Burton wanted you to see it, you know? Could have been. Could have been. But, yeah, I felt really bad for Bella Lugosi's character. Or... Yeah, you told me it was a sad movie. That's how you described it to me when we were first well, It was sort of it. sad for his part, you know, and for him just to end up dying like that, you know? Yeah. Just out of the blue. Oh, he's, he's, he's dead, you know? It's like... Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, sort of, sort of reminds me of poor Patrick, you know, we just all of a sudden he was dead, you know, and he sort of lived a sad life at the end, you know? So I can see, I, I can, I, you know, I can see where people would feel bad for Bella, but well, I definitely did for sure. The kid said he wasn't as bad as the movie portrayed. And I don't think he appreciated Tim Burton doing that. So I don't know. I don't know that I believe well, Bella Lugosi, Bella G. Lugosi or not. I have no clue. Well, I think he was, I think they probably portrayed the drug addiction 
probably pretty close to what it was. Do you think he called um, Karloff a cocksucker? I probably think he probably did. Good deal. Because <laughs> it's true, Karloff. God damn you. you Anybody could have played Frankenstein. Juan Cheney Jr. played Frankenstein just as good as freaking Karloff. Sorry. It's true. <laughs> so anyway yeah what's your rating after all that i'm gonna go ahead on? and give it a four or two i think this movie was very well directed and produced and uh and acted and acted for sure they all did a good job in i'm it. telling you martin landau that's one of the best performances i've ever seen of any movie i don't care what genre it is i mean that's I really praise that because Martin Landau looks nothing like Bela Lugosi yep. at all. And my God, he looked just like him in the movie for that time in his life. Yes. Yeah. He did. And that accent was spot on. Like you said, that Hungarian accent's hard to pull off. So yep. I think four is it's deserving of a four. Exactly. So yeah, I'm giving it a four too, man. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's all we got for Ed Wood. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's all. There's nothing else. Nothing more to say about the Ed Wood character. Uh, highly recommend this movie. Check it out if you have never seen it for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Hope and, we didn't um, give away too many spoilers, but uh, it's on Vudu in the streaming places. I'm If you want to buy it, it's pretty cheap, I think. I'm sure you probably f found it on Tubi. Somewhere. Somewhere over the rainbow. On Tubi, yeah. <laughs> well, check out our social media. We got the Evil Never Dies Evil Ones group on Facebook. Yeah, let's I get some more people in there, man. Yeah, we got a, had a few more join. Um, Check us out on our YouTube page and subscribe. Yes. We got a lot of people from the convention, a lot of new listeners, a lot of new subscribers. We're on all oh, the I platforms. Um, you do the the reels, which have become a big hit. They're on. Yeah, YouTube that freaks now. me out, man. I've been putting them up, and like ten minutes later, it's like I got a hundred views already. It's like wow, yeah. that's crazy shit right there. So, are we on X? What? Are we on X? X? What's X? X used to be called Twitter, but... Um, oh, is it X? They've changed it to X now? Yeah, Elon changed it to X. Yeah, we're on X. Okay, cool. <laughs> we need to start promoting more heavily on X now. <laughs> They're not cool. even called tweets anymore. They're called something else. Really? Yeah. Well, I really ain't know what the hell's going on then. That's You're behind the times. You need to get on I, X and find out what's going on. On the X. Well, like, they're not updated on the I'm phone. Like, what the hell yet. are you talking about? <laughs> I seen that he was doing that, but I didn't yeah. know it happened already. Shit. Well, apparently Twitter is so fucking dead that just throwing it away and starting a whole new thing is, is probably the best suggestion, I guess. Wow. That's crazy. Huh. But, uh, yeah, we're on X. Leave us an Apple review too. That helps us out a lot too. If you're on. Yeah. I always Apple forget. I, I pay more attention to the YouTube side where Brett is the podcaster side. So don't forget well, about our podcasting. We need reviews. We, we like re good review. Give us a bad review. I don't care. Well, I'll take a one star. Some, they can call me an asshole because it's tell me, true. Tell me I'm a piece of shit. I don't I'm care. I'm going to tell you what. I was a real asshole at work today. I, <laughs> I schooled several too. people, and I yeah, was, I, yeah, I was a dick probably. Work sucked today. I'm I so... worked fucking 11 hours today. It's, 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 I just can't believe how many idiots there are in this world. <laughs> I can't believe how many idiots I have. Yeah, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> uh, visit the carl todd.com it's semi-updated it'll lead you to count karabi's museum 
our uh, Facebook page and the YouTube. That's easy to remember. Just punch in my name. You can find the museum on Google Maps if you want to find us. And as soon as it ain't a hundred and fuck degrees outside, we're going to start working on the Han again. I may be out there sooner than that. Who knows? I'm about to order a leather face, I think. Oh, here we go. You don't think I ought to get him? <laughs> Been wanting that sucker for two months now. I talked to Maddie at, when I was uh, at the doctor this morning. I was bored, and she said, I said, remember, I was going to buy that thing like eight or nine years ago. And, and she's like, yeah, and you were mad at yourself for not buying it. But at the time, I couldn't really explain buying it because I wasn't running a backyard haunt. I was working at Moxley, and I really didn't need to buy any more big props. And I regretted it. It was one of those Jiminy pro. It was a leather face. It's sort of like my Michael Myers and my Jason. And I still regret that. So maybe it's time to rectify and yeah, get the one from spirit that has the moving chainsaw because it looks just exactly like Leatherface did in chainsaw one to a T even the freaking tie is exact. <laughs> it's exact. Yeah. If you probably would have got it nine years ago, it probably would have been built a lot better. It would have been. I already know the chainsaw will probably break on it, but I don't run these things, but maybe like five minutes a year or so. All of them still work except for Michael's arms broke, but that was broke when I got it. That's how I got him. All right, everybody. We've rambled on. You can actually see Michael enough. Myers tonight. Look at that. You can see his face right above the skeleton. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Evil dies tonight. Oh, remember don't... that. Don't even start that shit. All yeah, right, everybody. Thanks for watching and listening, and we love you all. And, and evil dies tonight. We'll talk hey, to you next week. Hey, evil, everybody. <laughs>